So just real quick, I wanted to point out, obviously this line going into the water heater is considered the cold line and we're using a red line, usually meaning hot, but we had some extra leftover three quarter inch pecs and we're just using this up. It doesn't really matter. It's just solely to differentiate the hot and cold side. They're the same exact material. Everything's the same exact, just a different color. But yeah, it's going to be all wrapped up anyway, so you'll never even see the red. This is the pressure release valve, and obviously it's going to the outside, and this tube is going to be open. So just to prevent any dirt daubers or any insects from getting up in there, got a little screen. Okay, so we are done with the batch water heater for now. It's obviously not completely finished. We still have to get the glass on there and all the cedar trim and make it look nice, but we wanna wait for that until the water is flowing into it just to make sure we don't have any leaks or anything. And all the pipes will end up being all wrapped in insulation and tape just to help protect it from the sun. But again, we're just not doing that yet just so we can wait and see. So the way that this is all going to work is the water comes from our tanks into our pump house where the water is pumped and filtered and then travels underground. I'll show you over here. Oh, hi there, bear. It travels underground through the pipe up through here. This is where it tees off. The cold water can continue into the house and the water also goes into the batch water heater. Now we can completely bypass this and just shut off both these valves if we want to and just use the water heater inside. So then the cold water comes in through this pipe where it then goes into the water tank. We also have a spigot over here just so we can drain the tank if we would like to. But the cold water goes in, then the hot water rises and then comes out through this pipe here and back into the house. And then what we have here is the pressure release valve. So just in case the tank does get too hot, the water can shoot out that pipe just back outside of the batch water heater and down towards the ground. But yeah, we just wanted to show you guys how we kind of hooked all this up because I know it is a little different because obviously nothing on this water tank is the way it originally was. We reconfigured everything, swapped everything around just to work with our design because obviously the water tank's normally standing up and we have it on its side. So we just had to change some things up a bit but excited to get it all up and running. But yeah, we're done with this for right now and we're gonna go back and continue working on the pump house. We're all ready to start getting everything hooked up in there. You guys know we got our carbon filter and that's had more than enough time to soak. So we should be good to go. By the way, it is really hot outside today and I'm like cooking next to the batch water heater. I'm gonna sweat my bump off. <laughs> Yeah, and in case you guys were wondering about our whole water filtration system, I can't see much getting through these water filters. They look like they literally filter everything, 
Like I don't even know why you would need a filter for this, but look at what this one filters. <sighs> like they really think of everything. It's pretty crazy. Well guys, not shortly after getting started, now we have to stop. <laughs> we need to run to the store. We thought we had enough of these inch and a quarter 90s and we are too short. We can get away with doing one, we have a team. Okay, but normally what we end up doing is getting a little bit extra of the fittings and everything just in case because it just helps us avoid trips like this that are really kind of unnecessary. So now we have to go to the store for two little pipe fittings. Y'all, this kind of stuff happens all the time though. Like we think we have everything we need and then, you know, you just don't. So <laughs> we end up having to make a lot of trips to the store and it takes a lot of time. He's trying to call Papa over. Bear. I'm okay, okay? I know you're gonna freak out, but it's all good. Hey, Papa. Hi, buddy. Wait, what'd you, how'd you have it? I had it down here, I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> we certainly have a lot going on in here. <laughs> you know what this reminds me of, kind of? What's that? Tube City. It's actually just a bunch of tunnels for hamsters to run around in. <laughs> My goodness guys our first cold front has rolled in and it is amazing we were not quite prepared for it though <laughs> I went ahead and just dug out an old jacket and uh, it's a little snug <laughs> but it's okay it's kind of like a suitcase you know you just got to undo the side zippers and allow a little room for expansion <laughs> So we thought everything was going great because we got all our plumbing up done up to the uh, water filters and then I realized that we forgot to install our little uh, gallon counter. We obviously bought this just to see, keep track of how much water we use and whatnot. So yeah, I kind of forgot to install that. Not that big of a deal though. So here's a reminder to look at life that's pouring into you. So my friend, let me tell you once again, and you know that it's true. Forget about seeing it or hearing it, in the end you must feel. Forget about 
You want to go on a walk? <laughs> you want to go on a walk? Come on. We're trying to be really quiet so we can see if we can see some animals. Okay, bear, bear, bear. Shh. So far, the only animals we have are the cows. Those coyotes are really close. Are those coyotes or hyenas? <laughs> Oh my goodness, you guys. The pump house is pretty much all done. We are waiting on getting a couple parts in the mail, but we're gonna go ahead and show you how we have our whole pump system set up and how we will be filtering our rainwater. All right, just to give you guys a quick rundown of what's going on inside of our pump house, uh, how we're filtering water and how it's getting back to the main house. First starting out, our rainwater collection tanks. We have three tanks at 2,500 gallons a piece. Each tank is 2,500 gallons. So we have 7,500 gallons in total capacity. That feeds underground to right here. So it comes up through the ground, up to this first filter right here. This is just a uh, reusable sediment filter. That's just solely to filter out any of the larger debris before it makes it to the pump. Comes up over into the pump. If you're wondering what this uh, little uh, shut off valve right here is for it's solely for just priming the pump just in case like our water level in the tanks aren't high enough uh, which currently they're not if say in the future i ever have to do a repair and the water level's a little low i can always still prime the, the system goes into the pump pumps out first stop is our gallon counter just to see how much water we're using just to get a rough idea so it goes down, comes up for, uh, into the pressure tank. The pressure tank is a 32 gallon pressure tank. And from the pressure tank, it comes up into our first water filter. This water filter is a five micron filter. So that means it can filter sediment down to 20 times smaller than the size of a human hair. So from that sediment filter, moves into our activated carbon filter. The carbon filter is solely for, uh, not only does it improve the taste of water, but it also filters like organic compounds, synthetic compounds, anything, stuff like that. So this just takes out the rest of that stuff, uh, anything that makes it past the carbon filter, or no, the sediment filter, excuse me. And from the carbon filter, the water will flow up into our UV light. Now the UV light's purpose is to there, there's no sediment now or any large material inside the water, so it's just pure water. And the only thing that potentially could make it past all of the filters is bacteria. So in order to also filter bacteria out of our water, which there shouldn't really be any, but just in case, we have a UV light. The UV light will kill all bacteria, viruses, anything, microorganisms essentially. You may also be wondering why our UV light isn't finished being connected. It's because we're waiting on some stainless steel flexible lines to come in the mail. The reason why we want to use those is because, well one, UV light can make it out. And I've seen a few setups online where people will just connect PVC to the UV light and the UV light will make the PVC glow. I was like, that can't be good. And I've read into it more. Most manufacturers say it's okay, but you really should use stainless steel. 
the reason being is because PVC can break down from the UV light over time and when it breaks down obviously that's your drinking water so we don't want our uh, PVC to be breaking down so that's why we're using stainless steel lines so from there it's just going to come into this PEX and then from the PEX it's just going to come down underground and back into the house so this whole setup will give us clean, safe, drinkable water. So you know what time it is now? What's that? Time to get power to the pump house. <laughs> you know that means now that you need to brush up on your electricity. Do you mean electrical? <laughs> <laughs> yes, electrical. That's what I meant to say. Okay. All right. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>